What is up ladies and gentlemen, many here, welcome back to the channel. Do I still have fear of falling after all these years rock climbing? A frequently asked question, not only here on the main channel, but also during the streams over on the live stream channel. By the way, you should check it out if you haven't already, links are down below. That's what I would like to answer with a real life example during this video. The comeback plan is executed full force as we speak and fate had it that last week I got my first outdoor session in since over 3 months. That was really refreshing as you know I value outdoor sessions quite a lot. We went to a crack called Hurtlucken in the Grazer Bergland. I had been there quite a couple of times previously. There is some pretty hard stuff there as well. Anyway, some of the only routes I didn't already send there start with a kind of funny, interesting, but also scary dino, which is actually challenging if you're not exactly on the tall side. As you can see, you're getting up to this ledge from which the route essentially starts. You've got this one and only clip that protects you, which is smartly installed as a screw binder so that nothing can go wrong with unclipping or so, so that's good. And now the mental challenge starts. It's not so obvious from this perspective, but in order to hit the target hold, the uh, starting hold of the route essentially, you have to jump not only up, but quite a bit back as well. So that if you don't stick it, you will fall off the ledge, fall off the cliff, so to say, full force. So as you have seen, I've been setting up my first attempt here quite for quite some time. I've been quite hesitant with this one, going for it first of all with one hand. It's always funny, you know, with these big kind of dinos, you always have the impression that you get actually further if you just reach for them with one hand. But yeah, funnily enough, you get such a swing out because you have to be jump back so much here that you can't really hold it with one hand. That's kind of inconvenient for me all the time because that means I have to, you know, match with the second hand here. I'm trying it again and barely hitting the second hand here as well. And that was actually what unlocked the dino for me. So maybe we can look at this one more time. There it is. So we're hitting the left hand and matching the right hand right after. And then we can actually hold the swing out. So what we're looking at here is actually a 7C route, super overhanging. It's called Techno Dancer. One of the lines that I didn't already climb here in the hood looking. And as you can see after the dyno, it's pretty much super steep. Couple of heel hooks there on some slopers with the hands. And it's almost like a traverse. You're not making really a lot of, you know, elevation here during this sequence. And yeah. It's interesting from a technique point of view to climb in such an overhang because you always have to find some spots to put your feet so that they are not really in your way. Getting another clip in here. I think here is this beautiful drop knee with the left foot as you can see reaching over to this small crimp there and then locking this one off. This is, you could say, one of the first harder single moves there apart from the dyno itself. And then you get into this pretty um, significant hole there where you could probably do a knee bar, but as you guys know, I'm a bit of a knee bar hater. Hater, yeah. It's always a strong word, a hater. But yeah, I'm not exactly the guy who carries a knee pad up every route all the time. But anyway, you can rest yourself away in this... Um, you can rest yourself away. You can rest yourself out. You can rest yourself until you are fresh again in this big hold, I would say, getting a clip in as well. And then we get into this interesting uh, second crux here. First of all, getting the, this clip in here. This is a nice chug with the right hand here. Or a very good hold, I would say. Here demonstrating some amazing clipping technique, you know, dangling the, the quick draw first of all and then getting the rope in beautifully down there. And as you can see, there comes another ledge up, uh, up there below this super steep overhang that comes at us here full force uh, with full speed that we are approaching here uh, and yeah we are already eager to send it i would say this is the um the place where the second crux of the route is contained a boulder problem on small crimps let's see how it goes heel hook right heel big lock off this is a left on the left we have a bad crimp here on the right we have a very bad crimp here stepping with left nice drop knee there onto the next crimp which is already a bit better stepping higher up and reaching further to the next crimp now here i lost my feet this is not necessary um, when i checked out the route before one go i actually could hold this move without losing the feet which was a lot more solid but here i already was quite a bit pumped and when you come back from the 
from the indoors only. I only had 45 sessions and the hangboard session so far during the comeback plan. I don't really have any endurance, any power endurance at least at the moment. So it's getting quite exhausting quite quickly if I climbed like this for a bit of time. And additionally, it was super hot during that day, so that didn't make it easier as well. And we've got this beautiful ending sequence along these not so bad edges and slopers in the upper part of the super big overhang. Here we are almost again more traversing than um, climbing really upwards. Couple of moves here towards the anchor, a couple of clips as well as you can see. And always quite body strengthy because you have to step these small footholds in the overhang down below. Here kind of a weird right heel hook, I don't know where I get this idea from, this is actually not very efficient. And then left heel hook again, locking this off. And this side pull here is pretty much a jog that I got with my left hand there from which you can clip the anchor. Which is what I'm doing I think in a second. So yeah, that's Techno Dancer. Pretty cool 7C of the Hurt looking in the Grazer Bergland. A nice comeback route, I would say. Um, afterwards, I checked out another route with the same start uh, called Efeuerrocker. So yeah, same start essentially. So maybe we can take a look at the dino here one more time. But then the route actually goes to the left into another route called, which is called um, Im Schatten des Efeu. And this combination amounts up to around 7B, I would say. A little bit easier than the Techno Dancer that way. So let's see. As you can see, I'm always spending quite some time here in front of this dyno because I want to get it right. You have to kind of overcome the fear of jumping down this ledge every time again and again. So there we go. Taking some momentum and jumping there. This time I managed to do it the first try. And then the route starts again over. So to come back to the original question, yes, I still do have fear of falling sometimes, mainly under three circumstances. First, in very special situations, like on this dyno, as you have seen. I was very hesitant there, I looked for a couple of holes, I looked for a couple of ways to sneak myself around that dyno, but couldn't really find one. And in the end, if you're really wholehearted trying it, and it works out anyway, but it's, yeah, it's it's kind of an, you have to overcome this fear of jumping down this ledge, you know, it's an all or nothing jump, so yeah, here fear of falling really shows through. Secondly, on a completely new project with hard moves and big bolt distances, where I first need to check out all the possible falling scenarios to see whether they are safe. This is of course another scenario where I still have fear of falling and I think it's very healthy to have that. Thirdly, if I had a larger, longer break from falling and climbing in general, obviously. Having fear of falling is natural. Having no fear of falling is highly unnatural. If we don't consistently train the body into believing that nothing bad happens if we let go, the body will return back into its natural state in which it believes that falling is highly dangerous. That's only understandable and that's only correct, in fact. On that note, I'd end this quick episode. Let me know down below if you've enjoyed it, uh, if you've got something from it. Drop a like, that's always helping. And check out the livestream channel for some laid back hangouts if you're uh, motivated. Keep crushing, my friends. Stay strong, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.